Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody and today I am running through 10 beginner tips on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now although these are aimed at beginners, uh, even if you're flying for a while there might be something in here that you'll get something out of. So please uh, stick around and check it out. Now let me know down in the comments if you have been flying for a while, what are some of the tips you would give beginners? Throw it in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you. Also, this is really aimed at the PC users of Microsoft Flight Simulator. A couple of these tips do apply to the Xbox version, but mainly for PC, so just so you know about that. Anyway, with that said, smash your like button down below. If you're new, consider subscribing. It costs nothing at all, except just a little bit of self-respect. So let's get into those tips right now. Okay, the first tip that I have for you is get a joystick. Now, some absolute maniacs out there can fly using their keyboard and mouse, and if you can do that, good on you, but it's blimmin' difficult. Uh, and conversely, you might want to use a, a gamepad or something like that, and that's totally adequate, but nothing gives you the sort of control that you need, like having a proper joystick. Now, I highly recommend, as a starting sort of entry-level joystick that's cost-effective but does everything you need it to do, is the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. Here goes a little picture here you can see. Uh, under options and control options in my sim. Uh, I'm not sponsored by the way, it's just a joystick that I've used for a number of years. It's really robust and like I say, it's pretty cost effective. Now, you don't have to get this kind of joystick, but there's probably three or four things to look in uh, when you're looking at a joystick uh, that's, that you really need. Uh, the first thing is plenty of programmable buttons. So what I've done is with this joystick, it's got like about, what, 12 here, and allows you to program things like uh, like the flaps or the landing gear or, or your comms or changing views, stuff like that. So having plenty of programmable buttons makes it uh, a lot easier just to be able to do things in the aircraft. The second thing that I recommend is an independent throttle. And as you can see down the bottom here, there's a little swivel that allows you control the throttle. Now some joysticks come in a HOTAS uh, sort of setup where you've got a separate throttle and a separate uh, flight stick. That's fine too. Uh, but this one here is actually built into the joystick as itself. And that means you can have smooth engine control, particularly for the GA aircraft. The third thing that I'd really recommend that a joystick has is a twist handle. So the twist handle is used to control your, uh, your nose wheel on the ground and steers the aircraft while you're taxiing around on the ground. Um, that, and it's, it allows you to sort of put small inputs in and keep yourself nice and straight when you need to do that. So having that twist joystick is really going to help you out. So Extreme 3D Pro, I highly recommend it. However, as long as it's got plenty of programmable, programmable buttons, it's got a nice uh, inbuilt uh, throttle control and also a twisting joystick to allow you to control the rudder, that is the way to go. Highly recommend getting a joystick. My next tip is complete the flight training. Uh, and here you go on the front page of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Go ahead and click on the flight training and it's gonna bring up a number of different tutorials that you can run through here. Everything from flying the small GA or general aviation aircraft right through to your, your bigger jets, the A320 in this case. Uh, now, going and understanding the fundamentals of flights will ensure that you enjoy your flying much more. You're gonna have a bit more confidence in uh, you know, all the different types of flying that you do, how to take off, how to land properly, how to run circuits and stuff like that. And if you're like me and you fly around like an absolute lun lunatic, at least you know the kind of uh, fundamentals that you're pretty much ignoring. But it's really good to at least get the basics under your belt so you can uh, get in pretty much any type of aircraft and know how to how to get it going and how to get it from point A to point B. Uh, so highly recommend get into the flight training and get completed. I do note by the way before I leave this tip that I haven't done it myself, kind of hypocritical. However, I've done a lot of it before this particular version so I haven't actually ventured into this but highly recommend getting in, learning the basics so you can enjoy your flying just a little bit more. One of the great things about Microsoft Flight Simulator is you can install a bunch of add-ons to make the sim look even better than it already does. And a couple of things that you'll find yourself doing quite often is number one, uh, downloading some livery. So that's the paint job on your plane and there's heaps available and I'll show you a site that has a ton of different liveries that you can add to your aircraft. The other thing you might do, and there are a bunch of different add-ons by the way, but the two most popular ones are aircraft liveries and the other one is scenery. Like for example, here we are at North Shore Airport in uh, Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, this is just the default scenery. So I might wanna go and add a, um, a version that someone has handcrafted to make it look like exactly, uh, exactly like the real thing. And so there's a bunch of different uh, add-ons available to enhance your scenery. Some are paid, but there are so many that are available for no cost 
at all due to the really talented uh, add-on community. So let me quickly show you the site and how to install it. It's really, really easy. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is uh, find the add-on that you actually want to install. And a really good site to do that is flightsim.to. Once again, not sponsored. This is a fantastic site that has heaps and heaps of different add-ons. Like I say, if you scroll through them, you can see, look, here goes some uh, a livery for Qantas Link for the uh, fly-by-wire A320. We've got another one here for the, the Vans RV7. You can see all these different little scenery, uh, scenery, uh, airports and all that sort of stuff sometimes it's airports sometimes it's cities there's heaps of different things that you can uh, you can actually download here goes Auckland downtown city actually right there and another Air New Zealand livery so you might say oh I want to fly around in Air New Zealand colors so what you need to do is you need to click on this and download the file you do need to register for the site uh, from memory and then extract that file uh, once you've got it downloaded, extract it onto your desktop or something like that. Let me grab my folder structure across here. So what I'll do is I'll put it up on the screen. I think there's a couple of different locations that your community folder will be located. Um, and essentially you want to just put your add-on folders directly into your community folder. Now one little trick to, to think about and be aware of is that when you extract, say, an airport, usually there's a shell folder. Uh, and then the actual folder you need to drag into here is uh, one down. So you, like for example, if I click in here, you can see straight away you've got content info, marketplace data, etc., all that sort of stuff. But sometimes you might click in there and it's just another individual folder with just this title in there. Hopefully that makes sense. What I'm saying is sometimes there's an extra folder you need to extract it, you know, cut and paste it out of that. But all you do, literally just drag it in or cut and paste it into your community folder and away you go. As you can see, I've got a ton of different add-ons uh, installed here on my uh, flight simulator, which just really adds to that immersion, particularly when you're putting real world airlines, real locations in the world, all that sort of stuff to really give that detail. So all you need to do, any sort of add-on that you download when it comes to deliveries and scenery, just put it into your community folder, make sure you extract it, make sure you, you've taken it out of its uh, you know cover or shell folder and uh, pop it into the community folder, as simple as that. Okay, the uh, next thing that I'm gonna talk you through is how to get involved in multiplayer in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now the great thing is this sim does a brilliant job and makes it nice and easy to hook up with your friends and go and do some flying together or join up a stream or whatever might be happening and join a group of people and go for a flight. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure that you are online, top right hand corner, there goes my uh, my online status and it's showing that I am online. The next thing you want to do is, particularly if you're flying with friends, make sure that you're on the same server as them. As I drop this down, you can see there's a bunch of different options there. So just make sure you're on the same server, a couple of basics there. So if we jump into the world map, there's one really quick way that you can join up and fly with your friends. Now, if they've already loaded into the sim and they're either at the airport or perhaps they might be uh, in flight, then here's an example right here. If I hover over, we've got Boston Dirt Dog right here flying across that looks like westerly direction on the United States. If I wanted to join him mid-flight or if he was on the ground at an airport, I can hover over and right-click actually left click, get it right mace, and I can just go set as departure and I will spawn right on top of him. And uh, and then I can go ahead and fly the rest of the flight with him or like I said, if it's at an actual distant, uh, departure airport, you can uh, join up. One thing you might find is when you load into the sim, you might not be able to see your friends for some reason. And this is a bit of a bug that does happen from time to time. Here goes some key troubleshooting measures that you can go through. And if these don't work, then jump on Google and see what you can find. But first thing to do is go up to flight conditions. Just make sure under multiplayer that you've got all players ticked in the middle here, this middle box, all players. Make sure you've got that on. Another thing you can do is go into your settings. So options and then, sorry, general options right here. And if you go into your data tab and you can see multiplayer right here. So just make sure that that is on and that will, um, you know, ensure that you can see other players. Uh, the other thing that you might want to see is the nameplates above the people that you're flying with or even uh, general aviation traffic or just aviation traffic that's around. It's in here under aviation traffic. You can turn uh, traffic nameplates on or off. One thing that we've found uh, for some of the people that do fly and stream and group flights with me is that if all that fails, log out of your Xbox account, log back in, and quite often that, that will um, actually reset things. So there you go, multiplayer, it's really easy, get involved. 
All right, the next little tip that I've got for you here is how to set up custom views. So you're sitting here in your aircraft, and of course you can look around the aircraft and outside by you right clicking on your mouse and looking around just like this, and you can look around all in your aircraft. You can scroll in and out to uh, adjust the zoom. You can also use the key, uh, your arrow keys, so I can go left and right, up and down, all that sort of stuff. And I can press F, and that will take me back to my central position. I can press the space bar, and that also uh, raises up my eye line just a little bit. Let's press F. But you might have a situation where you need to quickly adjust your GPS like this. And uh, rather than having to swivel around and zoom in and get the right sort of angle, you might want to set up a permanent view so that you can quickly flip to it and it makes it nice and easy to uh, view what you want to look at. So let's say it is the GPS that we want to adjust and we want a nice zoomed in view. Here I am, I've zoomed it in. All I need to do is press Control and then a number on my number pad on the right hand side of your keyboard there. So I'm going to go uh, Control 6. And so what that's now done is when I press 6 on that keyboard, it's now going to uh, bring me to this view. So let's press F to get back to our central view. And now let's press 6. Boom. There I go there. I have got a custom view set up. And you can set that up for the rest of the number pad. You might have one for, I don't know, maybe to adjust your mixture and your, your throttle. Uh, you might want to look closely at your trim. Uh, you might want one here to be able to uh, easily turn on your master switches, your keys and all your lights. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of different views that you might want to set up. You might want to, you might want to set up a view out the left-hand window. Uh, you can do whatever you want, basically, but nice and easy. Just press Control and the number pad number that you want to set that view to, and that will then be set up within this aircraft. Just remember that this is uh, individual to each aircraft, so if you set this uh, particular view up in the Cessna 172, then it's going to be different in the Cessna 152, for example. So you do have to set it up for each individual aircraft. Uh, but it makes it nice and easy when you're flying along you need to quickly look at something you can do that just by pressing the keyboard so uh, that's another tip for you right there okay the next tip is for all you frames per second or fps chasers you might say well how do i find out what kind of frames i am currently pulling so i can do some tweaking in my system well it's really easy just go up and press actually just press escape uh, it brings you into the menu and then go to general options and then go to developers right here and then you can turn on developer mode uh, and now if i go apply and save and go back and resume in the, to the sim right here um, i've got this actually set up in the options right here to show the frames per second here it goes right here under rendering display frames per second now have a bit of a look through the developers uh, portal right here the console and there's a bunch of different things you can actually do you can change your aircraft you can do a bunch of different things like this but uh, in this case here i have pressed display uh, frames per second and you get this counter up on the right hand side and it's going to show you what kind of frames you're getting currently in your simulator it tells you whether it's you know for example it might uh, cap out your frames and it might be because of your cpu it might be because of your gpu etc it's going to tell you all of that at the moment i'm getting a nice green and 76 frames per second pretty happy about that but that's how you go ahead and monitor your frames per second if that's something that you want to look at Okay, the next tip is uh, using the drone mode. And this is a really great mode that you can use to have a look around the sim. Particularly when you're flying, you might want to check out some of the scenery. Or you just want to check something out so uh, you can get outside the aircraft and take a look around. Now, I've actually got drone mode set to one of my buttons on my joystick. So I'll go ahead and press that now. And here I am outside the aircraft. And here you can see I'm kind of uh, going up and down and all around the place. Uh, although I'm in an actual drone itself and the way I'm actually controlling this and I'd highly recommend this if you've got one of these lying around is using an Xbox controller that's what I'm using on my uh, Windows machine right here and uh, I'm using the right trigger now to go up left trigger to go down I use the um, the sticks to have a look around I can also reset the view like that uh, by pressing the both the right back and left back button so anyway I can actually what it, what you can do is change the speed in which everything uh, moves around as you can see I can speed it up I can uh, go ahead and whoops, I, it's a little bit hard to slow it down sometimes got to press the right buttons there we go I can go ahead and slow it down and so what I generally do is I'm, if I'm outside the aircraft particularly if I'm flying with a group of friends or whatever I can jump outside the aircraft take some cool looking screenshots and easily uh, translate myself around the scenery and it's a little bit awkward when you first do it 
But once you get the hang of it, it's actually really easy. So one thing I want to show you in drone mode is if we go up the top here and uh, we open up our camera settings right here, uh, you can see that we're under the show showcase tab and we've got all the drone options. So you've got drone follow mode. What that actually means is when your aircraft is flying, the drone's going to sort of uh, stay in line with your aircraft or follow your aircraft essentially. Uh, you can disconnect that and your drone will stay exactly where it is and your aircraft will fly off into the distance. So that's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do right here is you can go ahead and change the rotation speed in here if you don't want to do it on your um, or if you haven't got an Xbox controller for example. And you can make a, a bunch of different changes like uh, the way you focus in and out, uh, the zoom level, all that sort of stuff. So you can actually... As you can see here, I'm controlling it manually. So you can control it manually if you want to. But the drone is a really great way to jump outside your aircraft, position the camera exactly where you want it in case you want to do a screenshot or in case you just want to check out the scenery. So uh, that's the next tip. Get, get yourself involved with the, uh, with the drone mode. Okay, the next tip that I have for you is slew mode. So if we just jump outside the aircraft and I press Y... Now what this allows you to do is actually move the actual aircraft anywhere you like. So I've pressed Y. Now I'd highly recommend Googling and finding out all the different default keys for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Or you can jump into your options menu and controls. Look at your keyboard, it will tell you them all. Uh, but uh, simply what this allows you to do, as I said, is move your aircraft around and put it wherever you want. It might be in the sky, on the ground, whatever. So if I go ahead and press F3, uh, you can see uh, that my aircraft is moving up nice and slowly. Uh, press F4 and it goes up really quickly, uh, F1 it's coming back down so it makes it uh, nice and easy to change your uh, altitude there. I'm now using the sticks on my Xbox controller but this is assigned to keys also and uh, I'm just showing you that this option here I might want to go way over here and place my aircraft way over here for some reason or it might be actually uh, up in the sky that I want to do it. Let me just get that right, let me say go right up in the sky and allows me to place my aircraft wherever I like. Now the good news about this is if you're like me and you crash your aircraft from time to time, you can pull it out of the bush and reset it up in the sky like this. Let's jump back into the, out of, I press Y to get out of slew mode, and there I go, I'm flying, I get control and I uh, can continue my flight from here. So it's nice and handy just to move your aircraft around and position it wherever you might want to position it. So that's slew mode, press Y to go into it, check out the keys in your op key bindings to uh, find out how to move it around if you don't have an Xbox controller. Right, the next tip that I want to give you is time acceleration. Now, you'd use this perhaps if you get up to cruising altitude and it's going to be a long flight, but you don't have time to actually sit there for all the hours or whatever it might be to complete the cruise. And so what you can actually do is you can speed up time and uh, it will get your aircraft uh, to your destination a lot uh, faster. So here we are just at a pretty modest altitude here and to enable time acceleration you've got to press R on your keyboard and then you press either control plus on your numpad or control minus on your number pad to either speed up time or slow it down. Now it doesn't display the rate of simulation <laughs> so remember that so you've got to make sure you count the number of times you push it because to bring it back to normal time you'll have to uh, press it the same amount of time. So let me just uh, show you what I mean here. Um, I'll press R on my number pad, uh, sorry, on my keyboard, then I'll press Control plus one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and there we go. It's uh, Since I've got autopilot, it's limited to that number. But as you can see, I'm speeding on by. You can see the scenery speeding on down below. Uh, but if I go ahead and uh, with uh, sim rate enabled and I press Control minus one, two, three, four, five. And there we go, we are now, now back, that message isn't going away, there it is. I'm now back to my normal simulation rate. One little hack is if it's got a digital clock uh, counting down the seconds on your, uh, on your cockpit uh, instrument panel, then you can kind of look at the, the seconds to see if they're ticking normally. Uh, and that's often a giveaway to see if you've uh, got the right simulation rate set. But uh, time acceleration, it's a handy little thing. Like I say, if you haven't got time to hang around and cruise, it can get you to your destination just a little bit quicker so you can get that landing completed. Okay, my final tip is how to bring purpose to your experience in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And a great way of doing that is engaging in one of the many career add-ons for the sim. 
and so the good news is there's a ton of these available at the moment and some of them are free some of them do have a cost so maybe what you want to do is if you're looking to sort of follow a virtual career path how about going checking out some of the free versions for a start so I will link you to a video I did recently which run through the top four or five career modes available for Microsoft Flight Simulator maybe one of those will appeal to you so go and check out that video like I said the link will be down in the description and it's something that, um, like I said, will bring a lot of purpose to your flying and give you some goals to aim for where you sort of climb up through the rankings, buy and sell the aircraft, do all that sort of stuff, you know, work in a virtual economy. It's kind of a lot of fun. And so I'd highly encourage you to go and check that out. Anyway, everybody, there you go. 10 beginner tips of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I hope you did get something out of it. Like I said, if you have been flying for a while, let me know down in the comments what's your best tip for beginners who are checking out Microsoft Flight Simulator. Also, please remember to smash that like button down below. If you're new, consider subscribing. And until next time, everybody, take it easy.